All right, welcome to this tutorial on Cinemachine in Unity. Now, Cinemachine is a very, very powerful tool. Uh, it allows you as a game developer to take your game from being just a game to being like a Hollywood blockbuster style game where it allows you to create cutscenes and panning around and, and adding like visual cues that would just make your game look like a, like a Hollywood uh, a Hollywood project. It's just incredible what, what Cinemachine can do and how powerful it is. So our goal today is to uh, learn how to use, how to bring Cinemachine into our project and then also to create a camera that would, uh, a camera that will follow our character, right, follow our character around. We're not going to get into character movement. That, that was a past tutorial so you can lean back to that. Uh, and then we're going to create a uh, a panning camera to pan around our our little terrain area here. So I create I went ahead and created a basic terrain, a simple terrain here, and I grabbed Unity Chan off of the asset store. So Unity Chan is free to download, and I brought it into my project. So I have my project ready to go. Uh, so if you want to pause this video and go ahead and create something for yourself, you can go ahead and do that as you follow along in this video. But I'll forge ahead, and the next step would be to jump into Package Manager. And what we're looking for is Cinemachine. And Cinemachine would actually be under, not under My Assets, but under the Unity Registry. So we'll search again. There it is, Cinemachine. I've got, I've got it right there. I'm just going to hit Install, let it do its thing. So at this point, uh, you should. Uh, it might take a bit of time for Cinemachine to install onto your project. Uh, so I went ahead and sort of fast forwarded here onto it being fully installed. There were some console errors that popped up. So I went to my console and just hit clear and it looks like they're not recurring. So it looks like I'm okay. Now the first thing you'll notice is that a new dropdown appears called Cinemachine. And what you see here is uh, now you have a, a list of different options for Cinemachine. And the basic one that we're going to start with today is the virtual camera. So every camera you're dealing with is a virtual camera. So what we're going to do is first off, I'm just going to add a virtual camera to my project. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to rename it to, uh, I'm going to call it third person cam. And from there, I now have a third person camera. And if I look at the options here under third person camera, the, the two main ones that pop up into my head are follow and look at. So this camera, its purpose is that it's going to be following the, our, our character, in this case, Unity Chan. So if I switch back to the scene here, we want to have this camera follow Unity Chan. So all you have to do is you take your character, in this case Unity Chan, from the hierarchy, and you drag her over to both follow and look at. All right. Now you can adjust Unity Chan, uh, sorry, the, the view of Unity Chan as you see fit. Like right now, looking at Unity Chan in the game view, we're not really seeing too much here that that uh, that a typical player might like, unless you know that particular that happens to be the particular uh, look that that you're going for in game. Maybe maybe that's what you want, but realistically, most likely not. So you won't use so you won't use these arrows to move your camera around. Instead, you're going to look to your tracked offset object here. And what you're going to do is you're going to adjust the X and Y. See, there's the X there. And I'll just control Z to undo that. I'm going to look at Y. So Y is pointing it up and down. So there's your rotational Y. I'm going to come back to that in a sec. Z, I pronounce it Z. I'm going to have to raise it higher. And there's also the offset too. So the aim is is one thing where you can look at, but if you really want to, if you need to move it around, like like my Z is 
taking forever to move. I'll look at the Z up here. So there we go. We can zoom in like that or with Y, that's better. Now we're up in the air a bit, which is what I wanted. And I'm okay with the X as it is, so I'll undo that. The Z, I think that's how far, I think that's a good view for what I want. And I can go back to tracked offset object or object offset, and I can try rotating the Y a bit more. But this will just take some fine tuning from your perspective and how you feel you want to go with this. So now I'm just gonna hit control S to save my scene so I don't lose anything. If I run this, and there we go. So we have a proper view of Unity Chan. In the game, you, you shouldn't be seeing uh, the box or the border around here. Uh, this These buttons came with Unity Chan this prefab in particular, I don't, I'm okay with it. But I wanted to point you to something here that didn't pop up right away. And there's this little icon here next to main camera. This is the, this is the Cinemachine logo. It didn't pop up right away, probably because my computer was a bit delayed because I got a number of things going on here on the computer. But what you should be seeing this logo next to main camera to tell you that Cinemachine is attached to your main camera. And so now anything you do has to go through Cinemachine. So this is a good thing, seeing this, this little logo here. Now, if you were to go ahead and add, uh, and add uh, a character controller and add, add a script to do your character movements, your character moving around your character, then you would see this camera follow every, follow uh, Unity Chan all over this little terrain here. But that's not the goal of this lesson. So the goal for this lesson was to get you easily up and running and connected with, with Cinemachine to be able to have your virtual camera follow. All right, so now that was pretty easy. Let's, let's start getting into cutscenes. So we're gonna add another virtual camera. So what I'll do is I'll go Cinemachine, create virtual camera. I'm going to name this one uh, cutscene cam. All right. Now here's the thing. The my end game here for this little exercise is that I want to do. I want to run my cutscene, pan around the world here, and then switch over to the third person cam. All right. Kind of like how you might see in a typical game where you're moving around the the world. You're you're seeing all these amazing little cutscenes, and all of a sudden. Zoom, you're into your game and you're into being third person to your character. Right, so I wanted to pull off something like that here today. So what I've done is I've, I've got my, my cutscene cam and I got my third person cam. We actually need one more thing out of Cinemachine and this is called a state driven camera. So I'm gonna say create state driven camera. And I'll leave it as its default name. I can't really think of a name for it right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag cutscene cam to it. I'm going to drag third person cam to it. But I don't want, I don't really care about this CMV cam thing right now. So I'm going to delete this. So I'm going to just have my two, my two cameras here. All right. And so now that I have two cameras, cutscene cam and third person cam, uh, right now in game, you're seeing you're seeing the, the cutscene cam as having higher priority. The, the thing is, is that with, uh, with, with these virtual cameras, there's a priority option right here under each of them. Sorry, under each of them right there. Right? Even the state-driven camera has the priority level as well. So when you want to toggle between cameras, you set the priority level. So I'm gonna give cutscene cam a bit of a higher priority. So I'll give it an 11 because I want cutscene cam to be the first camera that runs. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to animate our camera around this world. So we wanna keep the focus on Unity Chan. We wanna keep our cutscene cam looking at Unity Chan the entire time, or at least facing in her direction, and, and just pan around the game world for that awesome look and feel to our game. So first thing we need to do is we're gonna look at the follow and look at for for the cutscene cam. Now I said that we did this we did this for the third person cam already, but we're not gonna follow 
uh, we're not going to follow Unity Chan. We'll just keep looking at Unity Chan. So I'm going to drag Unity Chan's prefab into the look at portion. So I want to keep it continuously looking at her. This gives us a warning with body, saying that body the transposer requires a follow target. I'm going to change it to do nothing. I don't really want the body to constantly be following. Now what I want to do is I want to animate the uh, I want to animate this uh, it, this the camera around the game world. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take full advantage of the animation tab. And you probably have seen a create button. You'll want to hit create, create a file. I already have something open already. So I'm just going to continue on with this, but you should hit create and save a file somewhere uh, for your animation. Now, we're, so all we have to do is if you recall from animations in, in a previous lesson, uh, we, we just hit the record button and we start so we've hit record, and now I'm just going to move my timeline marker to somewhere further in the future. Because right now, I'm, I want to start at this location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Actually, you know what? I'm going to start somewhere closer. So I'm going to hit the 0, 0 mark, and I want to bring my camera to be sort of facing Unity Chan just up and close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a property here. So under... So I'll just do it again. So I'm just going to hit Add Property transform position i mean it'll actually automatically add these properties as we go uh, but actually what i want to do is i want to delete this and i want to delete this that it auto generate i want to create my own well i guess it just deleted anyway but uh, what i want to do is i want to bring the camera like i said closer up to unity chan so i'm going to start playing with this my it'll take some playing around with to get this right but I want to have it like right up close and personal to her. So there we go. I want to start at this side. Bring the Y closer. So you can bring the Z. That's it. Getting there. So it takes a bit of fidgeting to get it just right. Almost there. Almost. Okay. Perfect. I want to start this. This is going to be my first location in the timeline. Now, let's say uh, 15 seconds over, uh, maybe 10 seconds over. Don't want to go, don't, don't want to take too long. Now, what I want to do is I want to rotate out. So now I'm going to rotate away. To here. All right. Maybe at the 22nd mark, we'll keep rotating. Let's zoom out a bit. And there we go. A rear shot we'll zoom pan away from the world and we'll go up all right maybe at the 25 mark we'll pan over to the other side of the world like that and of course play around with it and see what see what you're see what you like like this is the perfect time to ex to play with and, and explore. Okay, so about there. And then finally, at let's say the 30 second mark, we're going to zoom right in behind Unity Chan. So let's pan around there. And there we go. And that's perfect. So now we'll hit we'll hit stop record. And let's see this thing in action. We'll hit the play button. Way too fast. <laughs> Way too fast. So we we'll probably want to actually slow this down. 
So all is not lost. We'll just drag our markers out further. Let's try again. Still fast. Go. Uh, there's there's that's what I was looking for. So there's the I was using the scroll wheel to move things out to zoom out. Shows I think now we're in the seconds mark. That's better. Okay, let's get this really zoomed out to around the 35 second mark. Let's say this will be about the 28 second mark. About the 20 second mark. About the 13 second mark, and let's try again. That's better. A bit slow, but of course you can play around with it. Get it to be to your liking. So the cutscene thing, you know, it took a bit of time here to really get it to where we wanted it to go. But here we go. Now we have this amazing pan around. It's exactly what we're looking for. Now I have to warn you, you notice that I made the state-driven camera first. Then I drag my cutscene cams in, and then I uh, made this animation. So be very careful that you do it in this order. You make your animation after you've dragged your cutscene cam in as a sub object to your uh, to your state driven camera, because you may lose the animation that you've created, right? And so all that work goes down the tubes. But here we go, we have a nice little panning camera. All right, now the trick is to get it to switch from this to our follow camera. All right, so this is where the animator will come into play. So I'm just gonna hit, so I'm just gonna click on my animation tab, control S to save to verify that, hey, it did save and sort of flush all these changes to that, to that animation file, cutscene can anim, all right? Uh, so so it's there. So we have it saved. We have our beautiful cutscene cam here. If I hit play, let's see what happens. So there we go. It's actually running it. So there we go. There's our... And of course, this is just educational purposes. Of course, you could probably come up with something ten, ten, 10 or a thousand times better than what I did. I have full faith in you guys out there. To do something way better but but you get but the idea here is to understand that hey we're able to create this amazing animated virtual cam like a nice little cutscene cam uh, and it's not very difficult to do and so now at the end of this animation we're sort of zooming towards unity chan and now at this point we need to uh we need to be able to switch over to our follow cam all right so what we're gonna need is, we're gonna need to do an animator. So what we'll do is we'll switch over to our state-driven camera. There's a bunch of settings here we haven't touched yet with this, with this, and now we're gonna focus our energy here. But first thing we need to do is we're gonna say add component. We're gonna look for an anim, we're gonna add animator. So we have animation, we need, we, we create an animation, we need an animator. And just to recap, an animator is essentially a sort of state machine that allows you to switch from state to state. So we've created our animator. Now we need an animator controller. So we got to create one. So what I'll do is I'm going to switch over to my project. And I already have a folder called camera. And it's basically all the animations related to the camera. I'm just going to get the plus sign. And I'm going to say, I look for animator, animator controller that is. And call it, uh, let's see, state driven animator. Or whatever name you feel like calling it. All right, now I'm going to drag and connect this state driven animator to my state driven cameras controller argument there. All right, now that this is uh, connected, I'm going to switch over to animator, All right? And making sure that this thing is highlighted, let's bring everything, zoom in so it's easier for you guys to see. All right, so 
This is our state driven animator controller, making sure that this thing is highlighted. We're going to add some states. So right click and say create state. And another, this is our first state. So our entry is going to go to this new state. We'll create another new state. All right. Let's rename these states. So first off, entry to new state. I'm going to change it to uh, cut scene cam. And I'm going to rename the second one to follow cam. And I'm going to create a transition from cut scene cam to follow cam. Now, if you don't understand what I'm doing here with, first of all, with the animation and with the animator, then you want to switch over to my lesson on animations. And I walk you through these two tabs and we use this to animate and, uh, and really enhance the look and feel of our UIs and, and in-game uh, characteristics for, a, for an earlier lesson. So I already go through this in the past. Uh, so you'll want to jump to that lesson for better understanding. All right, so we have here our, our states. The trick now is to associate them uh, with the animations in, in question. So we're going to switch back to our state-driven camera. Now first, actually, before we do that, let's just do a control S. So clicking on the animator tab, do a control S to save, just to verify that our, our steps that we did here were, were saved. So I'll even click somewhere in here, just so we don't lose this by accident. Now switch back to state driven camera one. You'll notice that there's animated target as well. And so what you want to do is you want to set this to your state driven camera. So we'll say CN state, CM state driven camera one animator. And actually, instead of that, we'll uh, actually drag the state-driven animator here, right? Yeah, so yeah, basically, yeah, we got the CM state-driven camera one animated target. That's this thing, and it's going to use this animator for it. Now, what we need to do is we need to uh, add in our. Uh, we need to set up some custom blends. So it's going to blend from camera to camera. So we'll hit create asset next to custom blends. And I'm going to move this also to our camera and just give, give the name CM state driven one blends. All right. And we need to add some states. All right. We need to for both this state and this state. So uh, we'll start with the custom blends. We'll hit plus. We'll say from any camera to cutscene cam. We'll do an ease in, ease out. All right. And then we'll add another blend going from third from sorry, from cutscene cam to third person cam. Now what this does is it tells the state machine that when we want to switch from these from this transition to this transition to perform an ease in, ease out. And you can play with it. There's cut, there's ease in, ease out, hard in, hard out, linear, custom. So after we're done this, play with these styles to see how it does these things. You'll see that I want to have a smooth transition from one camera to the other. So I'm using ease in, ease out here. And let's do it like a little control S to save, right? Now below it, there's states. And we need to map our cameras, our virtual cams to these states here. So I'm going to hit plus and say new state and I'll start with cutscene cam. I want to map it to the cutscene cam camera. Now, notice I kept the the names consistent in this case. I'm going to do another new state, and this will be follow cam will be mapped to third person cam. All right. So what we're seeing here is that this cutscene cam state will be mapped to this cutscene cam, and this follow cam state will be ma mapped to third person cam. Now let's see what happens. We're not done yet, but let's see what happens when we run this. So it starts there. And it actually just jumped right to third person cam. You probably saw up here, it went from this state to this state right away. So it kind of tried to do the cutscene cam, but it didn't get very far and it jumped right to follow cam. So we got to do something about that. So what we need to do is we need to look back at our, our animator state machine here. We're going to click on the transition here. And 
we have a has exit time. It's already checked off. If I expand settings, its exit time is actually uh, three quarters of a second. Our animation is is something like, and I have to double check the timing here to get it right. It's uh, 30, I'm gonna say 35 seconds, all right? So what we need to do is, and just to double check, it's not shorter than that so we don't lose anything there. So I'm gonna set the exit time to 35 seconds. I'm gonna switch back to animator and there we go. So click on the transition. So make sure you are in CM, so you can really get lost on this. You gotta be very careful where you're at making sure that CM state driven camera is highlighted when you switch over to your animator tab, click on the transition between cutscene cam and follow cam and change that exit time to 35. And let's see what happens now. So we're starting there. We're panning, panning, panning. You notice that my animator is still sitting at cutscene cam. zooms away so we got to that portion and you notice that this is all about timing it's all about timing right but unity and cinemachine and the animator animation tab that is make life so much easier for you here we go panning in and there we are and we switched from state to state we've switched right to our our rear view of unity chan right to follow you so now at this point what you'd want to do is you'd want to add your character controller, get your get your character controls up and running for up, down, left, and right on the keyboard, or if you're using mobile controls, add your mobile controls, and you can move Unity Chan around this game world. But there you have it. So this was an introduction to Cinema Machine, and we've learned how to be able to add a follow camera to fall to be like the the third person view of our character, and also to create a cutscene, right? And we use the state driven camera to be able to switch between the two cutscenes. So there you have it. You Now at this point, take this project, grow it, and see what you can do with it and see what the amazing cutscenes you can create are. All right, until next time, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Take care and bye for now.